All right, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to another day that we're spending in Thailand this week of our um, Where in the World Thailand. And we are joined today uh, live from Thailand Friday morning by my friend A. Pikul. Good morning, Swadika. Swadika, good morning, everybody. Chiang Mai. So, welcome uh, to Suan Dok Temple, one of the most beautiful temples, and it's full with history of Chiang Mai City. Okay. So right now, as you can see, I will turn around. Beautiful scenery right here. Yeah, Clara, you haven't been here yet, right? No, I haven't actually. And that's one of the reasons I was kind of excited about today because it's something different that I haven't seen. We, 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 plan to came, uh, we plan to come here one time, but we could not find the time because we very busy. Get to oh yeah. Remember that? Remember that one time I would like to uh, take you to Mang Chat? Yes. Yeah, because uh, this place is not only temple, but they have um, a monk university. It's called Juralongkorn uh, University. It's for the monk that can uh, graduate to be like um, any type, you know, like uh, they, they can have degree, master or doctor from this university and it's also international university so in Chiang Mai we have a lot of place that open for monk chat but normally uh, the other place is for the monk to practice English like they we welcome uh, the tourists or the people from uh, different country to come to chat with the monk because the monk can practice uh, English but this place is different because the monk here, they very well educated and they speak English very well. It will be a real Buddhism talk. I think uh, Reed, Reed haven't been here too. And um, Neil, Reed, Reed brother, you know, he been here once, long time ago with me and uh, some, some member of the group and they love it because we have uh, a very uh, knowledge uh, monk that talk to us and they share a lot of uh, story uh, to be among life and also the um, uh, Buddhist teaching like that. So next time, if you come yeah. a little bit early and we have free time, we can come here for the monk uh, chat and uh, the Buddhist with the monk. Yeah, and you can see. <laughs> Hey, before you get started, I just want to tell the people that are watching that uh, I am going to be just in the background monitoring. I'm going to let A run, run wild, but I'm going to be monitoring your questions. So if you do have any questions or comments, please go ahead and put them into the chat box here on Facebook and I will relay them to A. So take it away, my friend. Right. So um, first of all, you can see a very beautiful stupa right here, all white. This is a kind of like symmetry. But it's a symmetry of um, Lana Thai kingdom royal family because as um, uh, on the tour I will explain that Chiang Mai used to be the capital of Lana Thai kingdom when Sukhothai, the first capital of uh, Thailand, was uh, the capital of Thailand, and that time Chiang Mai was the separate. We call Lana Thai kingdom, and we have our own king and our own royal family, and this place they have. Uh, cemetery of the royal family of Chiang Mai. Yeah, so they will be here in a very beautiful white pagoda right here. And you can have a look over there, uh, the golden pagoda right there, that is related to the pagoda on the top of the mountain. If you already been to the Sutep temple with me, this pagoda was built a little bit early than uh, the Temple, yeah. There, there, uh, there is a famous monk from Sri Lanka, or Silanese monk. They come to teach the teaching of Buddha to Sukhothai people back to about almost 700 years ago. And that time, Chiang Mai King, his name is Guna, uh, was a very close friend of Sukhothai King. His name is uh, Ram Kamheng Maharaj. So uh, he, when there is a monk come to teach the teaching of the Buddha in Sukhothai, so the king of Chiang Mai would like that monk to come to teach the teaching of the Buddha to Chiang Mai people too. 
So he asked the king to send that monk to Chiang Mai. And when the monk arrived here, he built this temple as the resident of the monk and uh, to let the people come to learn uh, Buddhist with his monk too. And Suan Dok. Suan Dok is mean flower garden. So far, uh, before this temple was built, this area is the park or the flower garden of the king because it's very close to uh, Suan Dok Gate. Suan Dok is mean like the flower gate. Uh, like you remember, if somebody been to Chiang Mai before, you know, like we have the old wall of the city. And around the old wall of the city, we have the gate, like four main gates and one dead gate, like that. And this one is very close to the garden, flower garden gate. So the king donated his own flower garden to build this temple as the resident of the monk. And he built this very beautiful pagoda to enjoy the relic of the Buddha. The relic is a piece of the bone and the ash of the Buddha that have the pathway. So, and the, the uh, cremation and anything left, like the bone, the teeth, the hair, we call relic. And one part, he enjoyed on this beautiful pagoda right here. And the other part, he built a very beautiful, beautiful pagoda on the top of the mountain, although it's Sutep Temple, and he uh, bury the other piece right there. So right here, if you come closer, you can see this one is also beautiful and unique. Doesn't look like the one in uh, on the top of the mountain, right? But it's gold and beautiful. This one is the bell-shaped pagoda. It's um, Silanese style pagoda because Thailand, we got the influence of Buddhism from Sri Lanka. Silanese style. Most of the pagoda will be the bell shape like this because it's from Sri Lanka, like that, right? Okay. Turn around again. Yeah. So I just gonna keep walking around. So A, you use two different terms that um, I just wanted to clarify for people. You call them a pagoda and a stupa. What's the difference or are they the same thing? So stupa, it could be a small white thing over there. It's to enjoy the bone and the edges. And like stupa of the king, stupa of like the monk, things like that. But pagoda or chedi like this is normally enjoy the bone and the edge of um, the Buddha. And in Cambodia, they probably call Prang. And uh, yeah, uh, Pagoda or Stupa is depend on, uh, you know, like what country you you live into. And they can call it different. But like myself, I call this one Chedi or Pagoda. But I call that white stuff over there, Stupa. Like that. Okay. And can you tell us again um, that Stupa. when this was built, about what time, what age this was built? Um, as I told you, 700, almost 700 years ago, 700 years ago. Um, 640 okay. years, a little bit early than Doi Sutep Temple, because after they built this temple, they built Doi Sutep Temple, yeah, the one on the top of the mountain. So the reason I just wanted to point that out to people is that one of the surprises of being in Thailand is how all of the temples look brand new. Like this temple, I'm sure looks new. It's because they don't let their temples age. You know, it's like if you go yeah, to we, Italy, you see churches that they've let them age, but in Thailand, they constantly paint them yeah, and restore we, them. We mention Nandis almost every year because we got a lot of money uh, to uh, maintenance, like uh, the money from donation, and or even like when the tourists come, we charge a little bit of money from uh, the ticket, and then we can maintenance. Uh, actually, the temple that still active, the people still come here to make a karma, to do activity. We keep it clean and new and beautiful, except if it like um, no monk live there, like the historical park, we leave it natural. 
so we not paint or we not maintenance or anything, but we keep it um, strong, but we're not gonna repaint or cover the goal, like Super Thai Historical Park, Ayutthaya Historical Park. But because this temple is still have a lot of people that come to um, make a marriage and they have a lot of monks live here. Also, it's one of the biggest temple in Chiang Mai. They have monk university right here. So they got a lot of money and look very wealthy and very well taken care of that. And this is, you can see the hall. Um, it's different than the other temple because it's the biggest hall inside Chiang Mai city. So it can fit a lot of people inside here and it's the open, you can see, it's open. It, normally when you come to the temple, you will see like all the wall closed, like closed hall. But this one is the open hall, like the wind can blow. Um, it's only one open uh, hall in Chiang Mai actually. So I walk around outside the hall and I will get inside later on. Yeah. Is anybody been to Chiang Mai and been to this temple? Because one, uh, this temple is one of a very highlight temple of Chiang Mai too. But of course, like we have like about 10 highlights. You probably don't want to come to 10 highlight temple. So maybe three is enough, right? But on, on our tour, we come to quite a lot of temple too. And also, be, because this one is the royal temple, the one that was built by the king. So they have a lot of money to maintenance and they, when they first built, it's quite big. And uh, the one that around uh, the village is will be the money from the people. So why it's not this fancy, it's not this big, yeah. And uh, this one also, you know, like when we have a special occasion for the holy ritual, for example, like the new year chanting, like on the 31st of December, uh, we will have like overnight chanting for the, uh, uh, for the new year. So we will happen here. And also anything that very special occasion of Chiang Mai city, sometimes we open this hall, uh, to do a special holy ritual, um, like Thai New Year. Also, we have 24 hour chanting in this temple. You can see it's a very big hall and it can fit like many, many hundred people inside there too. Right? So I'm gonna get in. I have to wear a mask inside there. So as usual, we have to leave our shoes outside before we entry. Thai style, we leave the shoes outside. And here is the section that when the people come, if they not prepare anything from home, they, they can just make a donation, like for the candle, the incense stick and flowers to just offer to play to the Buddha right there. Yeah. All right, there's nobody here. And here is very common everywhere in the world that you will have checkpoint that if you have high fever, you have alcohol gel, if you don't have a mask, we have a mask right here too, right? Okay. So it's really, really big hole. And over there, that section, they have the monk always here. So when the people want to come to offering things to the monk or to the temple or delicate uh, the things for um, the people who pass away, the, mem the member of the family who pass away, they will come to offering things to the monk right here. And the monk normally like uh, blessing them and dedicate like um, the, the karma 
to the people who passed away. And also, like um, every temple that we go, we can uh, visit the monk and the monk blessing us and um, spring holy the water for us and keep us uh, protect something like uh, the holy court to protect on our arms like that, if you remember. Yeah. And this is the money tree. So when the people come here, they can hang like the money on the tree too. That's for donation. Yeah. And this is a very, very quiet temple today. Nobody here at all. In a very big temple. Yeah. Even this is one of the most popular. I wanted to mention to people that are that are watching that um, the when you show the money tree and you show all the different ways of um, making merit or uh, having good karma, people who are visiting who are Westerners are welcome to participate in that, right? Yes, yes, more than welcome. So, but normally Thai people, we already know that uh, we need to make a donation every time when we come to the temple. But because of the Western culture, you know, like a. Sometimes they thought they don't have to because they are not Buddhism. So why we have like the ticket, like 20 baht ticket or 40 baht ticket for the people who come to visit the temple in Thailand. For example, like the popular one, like this one, Doi Sutep Temple or the one in Bangkok. But um, the one that non tourists we not charge it at all. Um, yeah, because we thought if we don't charge them, sometimes it over, um, too many people come to this symbol and uh, it's create a lot of problem because they need to clean up the temple. They have to like um, uh, maintenance when a lot of people come like that. So why we just chat a little bit of um, tourists, but Thai people, we don't chat at all because we, we know that they will donate more than 20 baht anyway. Yeah, right. And that is the principal Buddha. So when we come when we come to the temple, yeah, as normal, we will sit down in front of the principal Buddha like this, and we will palm the hand between our chest. I don't know, I can put this down or not. Yeah, this right. So I'm an, I normally put the hand between my chest like that and put it in the ground for three times. Just to pray respect for the Buddha, the teaching of the Buddha or trauma and uh, the monk like three times. And also the same meaning with uh, you use three incense sticks uh, one for the Lord of the Buddha, and the second one for the um, teaching of the Buddha or the trauma, and another one is the disciple or the monk who follow the teaching of the Buddha, like that, right? That beautiful. Principal Buddha. Also, then I will walk around. They have a lot of the monk statue right here too. You can see this is one of a very famous monk in for the northern part of Thailand. He have the monument on the foot of the mountain. His name is um, Kluba Sivichai. He already passed away like a hundred years ago. So he is the people who built the road from the foot of the mountain up to Doi Sutep Temple. Because in the past, he's only walking up. The people could not drive there. Yeah. yeah. A lot. Very quiet. Can you hear me putting up? I can hear you very well. And you know, I was just thinking, A, you and I have spent a lot of time in a lot of temples together. And this is actually wonderful the way we're seeing it with you now because usually when we go into a temple with a group we can't actually talk in front of the buddha or talk very much in the temple so this is such a unique experience because in a way it's a little better than actually being there <laughs> right 
Oh, I found somebody. Where there? The cat. <laughs> I met I met one person. He's a cat. Right. Okay, and behind the principal Buddha, they have one big tall standing Buddha. Right there. Very beautiful too. So people who are not familiar with um, Buddhism or visiting temples, it may seem strange to see so many Buddhas all in one place, but they all have different meanings, mm -hmm. meanings don't they? The, the standing Buddha, for example, has a different meaning than the seated Buddha, right? Yes, it uh, represents to the story of the Buddha. You know, like uh, we have seven day Buddha image, you know, the birthday Buddha or whatever we call. So that is a represent to the history of the Buddha, like the principal, the principal Buddha that you see earlier. So one hand in meditation and one hand touching the ground, right? So that is when the Buddha made meditation inside the jungle, and that is the demon come to interrupt him from meditation, and he just could not fight and to do anything. So he just like one hand passing on the ground or touching the ground to tell the mother of earth to be a witness for him, to help him, to protect him from the demon that comes to interrupt him. So the mother of earth, maybe it's like Gaia in Greek or whatever, and what we call a sub, subduing Mara posture. So we call her the mother earth, right? So she just uh, come up from the ground and she twists her hair, so she has very long hair, and she collects a lot of um, water in her hair. So after that, uh, the water from her hair flood the demon away like that. That is the uh, meaning of the principal Buddha, like one hand in meditation and one hand touch the ground like that. So, and uh, like when we go to the temple and you see many, many Buddha image and I will um, explain you what it represents to like that. I, w I wasn't sure here where they move it to. Normally they have seven day Buddha uh, right here on the wall too. But over there, it looked like they already moved. Yeah, they don't have it anymore. Maybe they move it to somewhere else. Yeah, and um, like reclining Buddha, like in what pole? The reclining Buddha represent to uh, the Buddha lay down to make meditation. Doesn't matter like what position the Buddha, what movement the Buddha do. It can be meditation like walking meditation, laying down meditation, eating meditation, and sit down meditation like that. And another one is Nirvana. It means the Buddha passed away and is the last life of him and he not reincarnation again like that. So, and every hand expression is different too. Yeah, and this one, Sabrimara, you can see, one hand meditate and one hand touch the ground like that. Mm. Yeah, the man come clean the temple. They still keep it very clean, even nobody visit. But today they have a big group of um, students from school. They do um, Buddha, Buddha talk, Buddhist talk with uh, the monk inside there. I saw them, like uh, about a hundred of them in the monk chat section. Yeah. Actually, like the, uh, the meditation retreat that I took for three days, they have the monk from here, like come to teach me too, and he is one of a very uh, famous monk for the monk chat so because he teach all the monks in the university. And uh, he been invited to a lot of places and very well educated and excellent English too. So when they have a uh, Buddhist campus in English language, like for the Western um, students, 
he is the person that represents uh, all of the information and um, give and teach the student from um, uh, overseas too. So, yeah, this is it for this temple. And behind the temple, that is um university section where we can do a monk chat, but we have to make a reservation before so they can prepare the monk for us because the monk need to go to university like that. And we have a lot of Cambodian monk, uh, Laos monk, Sri Lanka Indian monk that come to study in this university as well yeah, because it's very modern university and they have like a uh, many section and after uh, the monks want to stop to be a monk so they can have a job like that so i have talked to one of the monks from laos like um he study um master degree and he said like when he finished master degree he will move to move back to laos like luong prabang to be a teacher over there like that a university uh, lecture in Long Plabang too. Right, is there any question for today? Sorry, I was muted. Can't Mostly just a lot of comments. People are really happy to be able to visit Thailand. Uh, our friend Don is watching with us who you might remember from our tour last year together. Yes, Don. <laughs> um, so, so Don, you not live in Japan anymore. You you moved back to yeah, Don and Stephen are here now. They're in the U.S. So yeah, they visited um, a couple of times. So um, okay. uh, Debbie is asking us, uh, are the local schools run by the government and is English taught in the classrooms of younger students? English, yes. Yes, we, we teach English in the classroom here too, but it's probably not really enough. So you have to uh, have a tutor or you have to take a special class to learn more English like that. So to be able to communicate in English well, yeah. But yes, but we have English class in the classroom, yeah. And what is the other question? I miss it. Uh, are the local schools run by the government? Are the local school run by the government, which is like the basic one that everyone able to um, study, but the one that apply with, we have also the apply with uh, school, is a, a little bit more luxury and for the people who have a lot of money to pay for a private school like international school a private school christian school like that it will be more expensive so we have different type of school university we have a private university international university and a public university like my myself so i finish in the one that belongs to the government. So because it's a lot cheaper like that, yeah. yeah. And of course you have to um, study hard to finish to get educated, yeah. And it this seems one is to me a market. lot of people are educated actually in um, in Thailand. And one other comment I wanted just to make, uh, the guy cleaning the floor of the temple reminded me, if you have any hesitation about visiting Thailand or Asia in general, but Thailand in specific, it is very, we've said it's easy, it's inexpensive, and it's also very clean. <laughs> they are really <laughs> tidy in Thailand. And so if you feel feel concerned about going into a country that's unfamiliar, Thailand will be, you'll like it. Uh, you can't you can't not like Thailand. It's like not liking Christmas, right? <laughs> oh my God. There is a monk, student monk walking there. Do you miss the monk? And you miss this and no. So look at that, look at that. Ta -da! <laughs> a fresh fruit yeah this is like the one of the favorite store that i like or it's like 20 baht you know 20 baht for one bag they have like a guava a fresh coconut and also like the guava pickle a mango and 20 baht and is like 50 cents just so people know yeah 70 cents For example, a pickle mango melon watermelon and pineapple look at that so fresh and a student mom come to buy it too 
Do you miss the fruit? Uh, yeah. And here, yeah. And here is a university, a uh, school for the monk section. It's um, bigger than this, but I could not walk in because it's too big area and it's not for me to visit inside. But they have very big area of the monk university right here. Yeah. They have the funeral too. So they have somebody die and they have a funeral here too today. Right. See? And that is another hall, like for the people who come to med meditation right here. And they have the beautiful Buddha image right there too. So I'm just gonna walk in there to show you one of a very beautiful Buddha image and one of the oldest Buddha image too. So if people who are watching would like to kind of put themselves in the mood, you should be drinking like a mango smoothie or a coffee with the condensed milk. You should be thinking of perfume of jasmine in the air, the warm, you know, air wafting around you, just the perfume of all the flowers. That's how you think of Thailand. So just to give you some this one is the This one is the garland for the people who pass away. I think he's one of a very important people of Chiang Mai. So you can see a lot of flower offer for him. Big funeral. There is the monk inside there too. They have the people come to do a Buddhist talk to the monk too. Like uh, in Thailand, normally when we have problem, we not go to psychologists. <laughs> We just come to talk to the monk and the monk can teach us some, some like, um, you know, some philosophy of life and how to be released or how to be detached and not attached in anything because life is like not permanent and everything is not permanent. Everything is temporary. When you're hungry, temporary. You're only hungry for a short time and after you eat food, you're not hungry anymore. And when you want to go to toilet, it's temporarily too. After you finish toilet, you're not, you don't want it anymore too. Just like happiness, happiness and sadness is not stay with us all the time. You, when you're happy, you be aware that it will gone. And also when you're sad, the sadness is not stay with you forever. It will go on too. Then we don't have to attach with any emotional we have each day like that. So why Thai people, when we have anything in life, we just come to talk with the monks. Doesn't matter what problem we have. Or when we have happy, we come to see the monk too, because we want to offering things to the monk. And we want to share, we want to create more good karma. And of course, when we have a lot of problems in our family, the monk will always have something to tell us to do like that. Yeah, all right. That is one of a very beautiful Buddha image over there. So that is one of a very old Buddha image and it's built of four. We call Gao Tu because in the past they try to hide it and they cut it in nine pieces and hide it away. And when and it's very heavy, right? Because it's built of gold. And after that, um, when we uh, re restore and put nine pieces together, so we call it, uh, still call it nine heavy pieces of Buddha. It means that one, one of a very important Buddha image of Thailand, okay? So is any question for today? So because I will finish my tour right here in front of the Buddha and I will pray to the Buddha for myself, for Thailand, for the tourism business that um, I hope like uh, the people can visit Thailand and Chiang Mai very soon like that. So I need to be calm 
and set myself in a very good attitude and be positive. Yeah, and we can be, I will share all of the good energy, all of the karma that I earn from uh, meditation and um, make a wish from the Buddha today to everyone who see this life or even you not see this life, I still share with everybody. So hope everyone have a very good energy and happy and have a great day or night over there today. Okay. Thank you so much, A. A is, let me just say, A is one of my favorite guides to work with. She's not just good at her job. She's actually good in the ways you don't even know because she's a fixer. She's on top of things. She runs a fantastic tour. So she is a really great. And I am the same. I am saying all the prayers that I can for us to be able to get back to our jobs that we love so much. So what a wonderful way for us to be able to pretend we're at work today, though, together. So I really feel like you and I are going to go out and have, you know, maybe a coffee now and that we'll be planning the next thing for our groups. So it's been really nice. Actually, actually sorry for my communicate today, too. I feel like my brain was a little bit slow because last night I am not sleeping up. And also, like, maybe I, I still don't have coffee yet. So uh, I feel like um, uh, my work is so stuck Maybe because I not practice English for so much, and I, I, I said like, why I talk uh, English slow, and I cannot think for the word. I will explain. <laughs> now I, I feel like I know that not enough coffee. You're doing great. I, your English is fine. I'm worried for when I go back to Italy that I won't remember how to speak Italian. It's the same way when you don't use a language very much. So you just have to call me more often and we'll talk more. <laughs> we do have one question though. Somebody is asking, um, are the, the Buddha statues made, what are they made of? Because they look like they're made of gold, this but they're one, obviously not. This one is made of gold, actually. And the other one, the one so, that can't be uh, solid we, gold. we, we, we saw solid. earlier, yeah. We saw earlier that one is made of concrete and covered by 100% of gold, but this one is made of gold. Yeah. Solid gold. Yeah, nine pieces wow. of heavy gold. Crazy. Well, and I remember one year when I was there, um, I went to somewhere in, in Ayutthaya. Bangkok, right? No, I, I wasn't know, with one... you. Yeah, I wasn't with you. I was in Ayutthaya once and I saw people, they would bring leaves of gold and they could actually yeah. apply their own gold to the Buddhist statues. Do you see that very often? Oh yeah, like by, uh, right here, we not allow them to stick uh, the gold in every Buddha. We will put the one that we allow them to stick in front so they can buy a piece of gold and stick on. But like this, we not allow people to stick on, yeah. Fantastic. Like the, um, like the one in Bangkok, uh, you know, uh, you will see like uh, when we visit Wat Ho, they have the section that people can stick the gold. And when we go inside the hall, you're not allowed to stick the gold on Reclining Buddha. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, I think that those are all the questions that I have for you today, but I want to just really thank you for everything you shared with us this week. Uh, it has been a joy to go to Thailand, and uh, I am so excited to travel with you again next January. You guys should know that A is like one of my sisters, and so she and I are always up to no good. So if you travel with us, you never know what's going to happen, uh, but you know it's going to be fun. <laughs> So uh, if you're interested in joining us, again, it's going to be January of next year, and that's pretty much looking like a go. So you can go to Imprint Tours website, and you can uh, put in a reservation with no deposit, nothing, and you can spend two glorious weeks drinking coffee and touring temples and going to desert islands with A and I. So okay. thank you so much. <laughs> ka, kum ka, my dear friend. Bye-bye. And if anybody would like, if you would like to um, tip A, you can send that tip to my PayPal account and I will pass that on to her. So thanks again so much, everybody. Thank you so much, A. We'll see you again Thank soon. You.